creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I'm uploading a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below. What do I have going on for you for today? Ha ha ha, I'm so excited about today's DIY. What is it? It's one that I'm gonna say was a pretty good hit that you all really loved. I'm bringing to you a summer tier tray. Today's tray is a lemon themed tray for summer. Oh, I love this. And I want to say that there is probably 18 DIYs in this one. I'm not sure. Don't quote me. We'll know at the end after I count them down to you. But they are quick and easy ones. And this tray, I think you're going to love it. If you love the Easter one, you're going to want to do this one too. It is so budget friendly. And we're going to do a bunch of them throughout the year so we can swap them out. And I'll show you how I store mine later. But for now, we got to get to these DIYs. We got a ways to go. So let's do some Dollar Tree DIYs for this lemon theme tear tray for summer. I love this one. I think you're gonna love it too. Let's get to it. Buckle your seatbelts. Did I tell you the last time get some popcorn? Cause you should. Doing a quick recap for those of you that are new to my channel. If you hadn't seen my first tear tray DIY, this is the spring and Easter one. You can find the link to this video in the description box below where there were 20 quick and easy DIYs for this tray. I'm going to start off by showing you the embellishment pack that Linda and I designed specifically for this lemon summer tier tray. This here is the embellishment pack. This is available in Linda's Etsy store. You can find the link to her store in the description box below. What do I have for you first? Let's take a look. I've got this word relax. That's what we're supposed to do in the summertime, right? Or at least try to. Now some of these DIYs maybe repeat DIYs, but I'm going to tell you I do have a bunch of new ones that I designed specifically for this tray that you are going to want to stay tuned for. And that really is my goal with each of these trays is to come up with some new cute DIYs, not just use the same DIYs and change the colors. I feel like that's going to get a bit repetitive and boring. And so my goal is to really come up with some cute budget friendly DIYs to add to each tray that you'll want to stay tuned for. With something like this, these words are really easy to incorporate. They've got different words at the Dollar Tree, and so why not incorporate this? It's easy to DIY. The colors that I'm using for today's tray are yellow, gray, black, and white, and the yellow that I'm using is by Waverly, and it's in the color of maize. So with this piece, I'm gonna go ahead and do the words themselves yellow, and I'm gonna do the base in gray. The gray that I'm using is by Waverly, and it is in the color of steel. Now you know I'm gonna add detailing to this. I wasn't done by just painting it in the detailing I'm adding. Mm -hmm. It's stitch marks. Now I understand that stitch marks may not be for everybody, but they are definitely for me. So if stitch marks aren't for you, just don't put them on. I feel like the word looks way too plain without them. I like the look. I feel like it adds that country quilted look to it and that's a look that I love. I'm not saying that my look is for everybody, but get creative. Make it your own. Take what you like and leave what you don't. That really is what DIYing is all about. I'm gonna add the gray stitch marks and there's gonna be a bunch of stitching in this DIY, so get ready. What do I have up for you next? DIY number two. For this one, I am using one of these butterfly frames. How cute are these? Now, yes, you can say that this is a repeat DIY, but this time it's a butterfly. It's not just a circle. And I like to add these because I feel like it adds height to the tray. You don't want everything to be the same height. You want some height differences, which is going to add depth and dimension. And so with this one, I'm going to go ahead and start off with the yellow, which is the maze, and I'm gonna give the top of this butterfly a good coat of that. And for the stand, I figured I'd go with black to try and disguise it, maybe kind of give the illusion that this butterfly is flying. Who knows, maybe it'll look that way. Maybe it won't, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I picked up this paper pack a few weeks ago when Michaels had that amazing sale on their paper. I like to add 
patterns, textures to my DIYs. And so I thought that maybe adding this yellow gingham to the butterfly would be a cool pattern to add to the tray itself and kind of help to break up the repetition of using the yellow, black, gray, and white in this. And so to add it to the butterfly, I'm just gonna add some Mod Podge to my butterfly. I'm gonna place the paper right on top of that Mod Podge. You're gonna wanna smooth that paper out as best you can so it doesn't wrinkle and bubble. Once you've got it pretty well smoothed out, go ahead and add a second coat of Mod Podge to the top and let it dry. Once it's good and dry, you can take some scissors, you can take a razor and cut off the excess paper. And to the, what I'm gonna call the antennas of a butterfly. Now, this may not be right, let's not get technical. You know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna make these gray. And yes, of course, I'm predictable. I know, I'm finishing off this butterfly with some stitching along the outside edge. Now, honestly, I I'm gonna try and convince some of you. When you look at this butterfly, look at the side that doesn't have the stitching versus the side that does. You can't tell me that the stitching does not add more character and give it a more finished look. I feel like when you look at it without the stitching, it just feels unfinished. It looks unfinished. And so that there is my plea to you. But again, stitching isn't for everybody. So if it isn't for you, you can leave it out. This was missing something. Twine, that's it, a twine bow to be exact. How cute is that? Perfect finishing touch. Dollar Tree has these huge spools of twine that are perfect. Now for this butterfly, I'm using this round burlap embellishment that comes in the embellishment pack that says, hello, summer. How cute is that? We're moving along. We're on DIY number three. What do I have in store for you for this one? This is a lemon tray, so we need lemons. We're gonna make lemonade out of limes. <laughs> Just kidding. And so to do that, because Dollar Tree doesn't have lemons, I'm just gonna paint these cool limes yellow and we're gonna make them limes. They're the same shape, so why not? But because these are green, it's gonna take a few too many coats. I'm not gonna lie. And look at there, we just made lemons out of limes. Perfect. Our lemons need leaves though, so I'm gonna go ahead and use some of the leaves that I had off of some silk flowers that were in my stash and I'm just gonna hot glue it onto the top of the lemons. And I think that this really adds to it, it finishes it off, and yeah, it takes it from being just a painted lime to a really cool lemon with a leaf on top. Why not? What do I have going on for you for DIY number four? For this one, I picked up one of these cute little wood chests from the Dollar Tree. You can even get these at Michael's in their dollar bins. I'm gonna remove all the hardware on this piece. Now, don't throw the hardware away because we may need it a bit later, but I am going to remove these hinges and the two clasps on the lid and on, I guess, the chest itself. I am going to take some of my favorite Dollar Tree spackling and fill in the holes on this part of the chest because we don't want holes in this. Why would we have holes in this? You know how I feel about those. I'm gonna keep you in suspense as to what I'm making. I'm gonna give this box, this wood box here, a good coating with the gray paint. Did I tell you it was Waverly Steel? Well, it is. Taking this here popsicle stick, I'm just gonna cut this in half because I am making a wheelbarrow. And this is gonna be those two handles that go on each side of the wheelbarrow. So Michaels has these cool bags of wood beads. I am loving these because you're getting three different shapes of beads in them. And what I love about them is they're a raw wood so they can be painted. I'm gonna take this kind of oval one and I'm gonna hot glue it to the front because this is gonna act as the wheel of our wheelbarrow. And I'm just gonna hot glue my popsicle sticks here up to the side. And look at there, out of Dollar Tree's treasure chest, we just made a really stinking cute mini wheelbarrow for our tiered tray. For the handles and the wheel itself, I'm gonna give it a nice good coating of some black matte paint. I'm using the Waverly ink. Now, I gotta say something about Waverly here. In the comment section a couple weeks ago, some people were telling me that at their Dollar Tree, they saw that the Waverly paint was clearanced. And so it made me a little bit uneasy, I'm not gonna lie. So I headed over to my Walmart and to my surprise, the paint was on clearance. Now it doesn't look like they're restocking this and this is a bit worrisome for me because I love Waverly chalk paint. I use it all the time. I am 
Ah, I, I'm at a loss for words, quite honestly. I know that Joann's and Michael's has a folk art chalk paint, but the bottles are smaller, it's more expensive. So does anybody know what's going on with this? Is Walmart no longer carrying Waverly paint? Is Waverly going out of business? Did Waverly just simply stop making paint? I can't imagine that they would do this because their paint is amazing. Somebody tell me, please. I tried to Google it and I came up empty. Since the barrel part of the wheelbarrow is gray, I'm gonna add some yellow stitching to this as well. This is a lemon tray. Our wheelbarrow needs to be filled with lemons. So I picked up these lemon drops from the Dollar Tree to fill this wheelbarrow with. I think it's the perfect addition to this. I'm not worried about critters. If you are, you could put fake ones in there or you could just seal this and it'll keep the critters away. I wanna point out to you that if you are interested in these embellishments, you can find them at Linda's Etsy store. They are available for instant digital download, which is a PNG file. You're gonna get that for 250, or you can have her cut them and ship them to you with free shipping for the bargain price of $5. You can find the link to Linda's Etsy store, did I say, in the description box below. To apply these embellishments to the pieces, I'm using some of Dollar Tree's foam tape. Why am I using this? Because it elevates it up off the piece versus just sticking it flat on there. When you elevate it, it adds dimension. It gives it character. It just kind of gives it that 2D, 3D element, look, feel, vibe that I like. And so, yeah, I'm just gonna use the foam tape to apply these and each of these embellishments were specifically designed for each of the pieces that I'm bringing to you today. I know you saw it, I saw it too. All of the lemon drops were falling out of the wheelbarrow so I figured I better hot glue them down just to keep them in there. And here we have an adorable wheelbarrow made out of one of those cute little Dollar Tree wood chests. How stinking cute is that? We're at DIY number five. We're not even halfway done with this tray yet. Now, how many of you were wondering or thinking, I bet she threw the lid to that wood chest away? I didn't. I'm gonna make something out of it and this is gonna be really stinking cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish removing the hardware from this. And again, we are not throwing this hardware away because we're probably gonna need it, I'm thinking. I'm gonna give this a good coating of some white paint. This is a chalk paint by Waverly. You know what? It is just so not right if Waverly goes out of business or Walmart stops carrying their paint. I'm not gonna lie to you, I went to my store, I bought as many colors as I could, which the selection was minimal because other people beat me to it. So I went online, I saw that they had some of the larger bottles in stock of my favorite cashew, the white, the ivory, and of course the antique wax. And so I bought a few bottles. Now after I bought them, I was thinking, oh my word, People on my channel are gonna be so angry at me if I use this stuff because it's not gonna be readily available to them. And so then I was kicking myself for buying it, but there will be alternatives that I give to you when I use them. I just really hope that maybe they're discontinuing the colors and they're coming out with some new ones. One can hope, right? It's just not gonna be right if they stop carrying it. The lid of this chest has some really cool detailing on it, so I figured I'd use that to my advantage and I would paint the outside detailing gray. Does anybody know where I'm going with this yet? Oh, this one's really cute. This here clasp was one that I think was on the box, and so I'm gonna put it right here on this lid. I know this has to be a giveaway. Somebody has to know where I'm going with this now. I'd love to keep you all guessing. It's fun. I am so not a gold person, so I'm gonna give this a good coating with the black paint just to cover it up. If you all are doing these trays with me, I would love to see your take on them, your twist, your version of them. So snap a quick picture of it and post it on Facebook. If you're not following me on Facebook or Instagram, you can find the links in the description box below because I think it would be really fun to see some of your creations when it comes to these tiered trays, when it comes to any of my DIYs for that matter. When I made the wheelbarrow, I kept thinking, what can I do with the lid? How can I utilize it? And when I was staring at it, I suddenly saw a front door, I'm gonna call it a front door or a door, and thought that it would be a cute addition. And so we added this cute embellishment that says welcome because you welcome people through your front door and just thought we'd top it off with one of these extra flowers that are in the embellishment pack too. And that there is called repurposing. How fun is that? Oh my word, if you need a good laugh, 
Today you need to head on over to Kayla's channel after this video because she's doing a voiceover on the DIY stand that I made out of plungers for today's lemon themed tiered tray. You can find the link to this video in the description box below. DIY number six. This is a cute one. For this DIY, I picked up this three pack of dessert glasses. No, these are really shot glasses. I know it shows dessert on the label, but let's be real. These are shot glasses. I'm gonna take two of the three. The third one, we're gonna put it aside because we'll probably use it in another tear tray DIY. But for this one, we're gonna use two of them and I'm gonna give it a good coating of the yellow paint. Both of them. Yep, both the same color. Once I've got a good couple coats of that yellow base paint on, I'm gonna go in with a pencil and I'm gonna draw a simple but cute face on these dessert shot glasses. That's what I'm gonna call them. And I always seem to do it in pencil first because I feel like it takes the pressure off of doing it perfect. If you start off by using a Sharpie, you kind of know that when you do the Sharpie, you can't make any mistakes the first time because if you do, then you've kind of messed up your DIY and you gotta go back in and fix it. But if you start off with a pencil and you make a mistake, you can easily erase it and it's fixable and then you can go back over it with your Sharpie pen and the pressure has now been taken off and you have, I think, a better end result. I thought it'd be cute to add some eyelashes to the eyes because this is a stinking cute DIY so we gotta add the stinking cute factor to it, right? Right. Every cute face needs some rosy cheeks, so I'm gonna go in with my Sharpie, my pink Sharpie, and just add some pink cheeks just by kind of making dots. Don't overthink it, just do a dot and it'll come out cute. Okay, those are really stinking cute. So for these cute mini cups, yep, I am adding caulking, but before I added the caulking, I went and dug through my pantry and I decided to go with flour this time to fill up these cups. Last time I went with sugar, this time I'm going with flour. Why am I doing that? Because I don't wanna fill the whole cup up with caulking. That's gonna be a lot of caulking and it's gonna take forever for it to dry. And so I decided to go with some flour. Last time I was asked when I used sugar, why didn't you use salt or sand? If you want to use salt or sand, I say use salt or sand. If you want to use dirt from your front yard, use dirt from your front yard. Caulking from the Dollar Tree works perfect to add that whip topping to the top of a sundae. Dollar Tree has really cute paper straws, but they never seem to be in the colors that I need them in. And so by simply just taking some acrylic paint and painting over the color stripe that's on the straw itself, you can very easily change it and make it something that you can incorporate into your DIY. So for this, we need it for the lemon tray. I need my straw to be black. And so I'm just gonna be adding some black paint to it. I'm not using it, so it's okay that it's painted. And you are going to want to put those straws in the caulking before it dries because, yeah, then you're not gonna be able to put the straws through the caulking. Every Sunday needs sprinkles, right? Right, that's what I was thinking. I had these sprinkles on hand in my stash already and since there was black in there, I was thinking, perfect! This is the perfect addition to the top of this whipped cream sundae. So I went ahead, I added the sprinkles to the caulking while it was wet because you want the sprinkles to stick. Only to my surprise, because the caulking was wet, it caused the black sprinkles to bleed. And then I found that I had bleedage and it turned my caulking purple. If I had to do it over again, I wouldn't use the black sprinkles. Lucky number seven, what do I have for you for this DIY? This here is a repeat DIY, it is books. I love making books for these stands. I think that this is one of my favorite DIYs to incorporate into them because they're so stinking cute. I have one by fours on hand in my stash because I made that Christmas stand for my village and so I didn't throw away any of my scraps and so I'm glad I didn't because they are coming in useful for this. If you don't have one by four wood, I would glue together some of the square little blocks that Dollar Tree has by Crafter Square or even Jenga blocks. You can get the same effect doing the same thing using those items as I'm getting using the one by fours. The embellishments that we came up with for this are these 
I guess, book titles that are gonna go on the binding of each book. And we decided to use embellishments this time instead of vinyls because some people were kind of struggling with the vinyls. And so we thought that we wanted to kind of make it a bit easier this time. I also picked up some of this lemon ribbon, loving this, and I thought that this would be the perfect addition to tying these books together and adding a bow to the top. How stinking cute are these? I love them. These are just as cute as the vinyl and easier. Are we almost there yet? We're about halfway. DIY number eight. For this DIY, I'll be using this wood glue by Super Glue. I'm gonna start off by gluing four sets of three blocks together, just like you see me doing here. Once I've got the four sets glued together, I'm gonna take two of the sets and I'm gonna glue them together side by side, just as you see me again doing here. Then I'm gonna take another set and I'm going to glue it, but stand it up on its side here. It's really hard to explain in words, so as I'm doing it, you can just see where I'm going with this. Does anybody know what I'm making? And we're gonna do that with two sets, actually. We're gonna glue them together on each side, standing up just like so. I wanted to add kind of a countertop, I guess, if you will. And so just by placing some glue right here on the top and placing the Jenga blocks right on top, just like so, you can see that it not only makes a countertop, but it also gives it a more finished look. Because this is a lemon-themed tiered tray, we need a lemonade stand to go on it, right? And this is such a quick and easy way to do it. And so our lemonade stand needs a sign. And so by putting some popsicle sticks on the inside of the stand, just like so, then taking some of the jumbo popsicle sticks and gluing them along the top, we have just made a cute lemonade stand. How easy was that? And look at how cute it is. It's the perfect size for our tray. It's a lemonade stand, yay! And this is no different than any other one. This is gonna have a trio of colors, literally. I'm gonna do the stand itself in white. We're gonna go with a gray countertop, cause why not? Because we can. And for the sign itself, I wanted to go with that chalkboard look. And so I'm gonna give the sign a good coating with the black matte paint. Oh wait, we can't forget the stitching on this one. And again, for the embellishments, I'm gonna use some of that foam tape because I really like that elevated look, the look of giving it dimension. And so these are ones that were specifically designed for this lemonade stand and look at how cute it looks. And the fresh squeeze lemonade embellishment is just gonna be offset a bit. And there at the top where it would be the chalkboard, we went ahead and did just lemonade five cents. How fun is that? I really love these embellishments. I think that this pack is really super cute and so fun for this stand and it really does just scream summer. Number nine is up next. What do I have in store for you? I'm thinking that I want to add some flowers to this tray too. I love the look of flowers on these trays. And so to do that, I am using the outer shell of those wood drawers. This was one that was in my stash, clearly. It was one I actually tried to use a wood burning chemical on and it didn't go as planned. But instead of throwing the drawer away, I kept it and now it's being used for a wood flower box. And I'm gonna give it a good coat of gray. I'm gonna take some floral foam and I'm gonna hot glue it to the base of this cause we don't want it to pop out. And using some of that amazing lemon ribbon, getting away from the stitching a bit, I thought it would be really cute just to kind of add the ribbon to the top and the bottom of the box. The flowers that I added to this are just some white flowers from the Dollar Tree and these yellow, I wanna say cattails. They were the perfect color yellow. To the butterfly, I wanted to fill it with some of the green moss just to kind of make it a decor feature. Look how cute that is. Dollar Tree also has these chalkboard picks that I thought were really cute. And so I thought adding the word bloom to it would be perfect. How fun is that? And just by adding this to the flowers, I think that it makes it a fun floral piece for this tray. Oh my word, we're at 10. We are past the halfway point, I think. I'm gonna be incorporating a strand of beads into this tray as well. I just love the look of them. I think that it is such a fun accent piece to add. The beads that I'm using are these beads that I got from Michaels. I got this pack for $1.50. 
which I think is a great buy. I really liked it because I liked the variation of beads that was in the pack. Now, I know Dollar Tree has beads. They are colored beads. They are horrendous. I don't much like them because it takes a ton of coats to cover up those horrendous colors. And so I just wish that Crafter Square would come out with some raw wood beads because it would make life easier. But nonetheless, you can get these at Michael's for $1.50. And I find that by just putting the beads on a piece of pipe cleaner, when painting them, it makes it very easy to paint them all because the pipe cleaner is stiffer. It's not flopping all over the place. You kind of have control over it. For this strand, I am going with yellow, gray, white, and the natural wood color for these beads. And to finish the ends off, I did a tassel using the Baker's Twine, this roll here that you can get from the Dollar Tree. DIY 11 is in fact a repeat DIY. It is the birdhouse. I love these birdhouses because they are such easy pieces to DIY and there's so much detail and character that you can add to these. And so I think that they're just a fun piece to probably include into every tray. I think I'll just kind of switch up whatever birdhouse it is that I'm getting. You can find these birdhouses at Dollar Tree and at Michael's both for a dollar. I feel like the ones at Michael's have a bit more detailing to them. They're not just the house. And this is the house from Michael's and I like how it has the wood picket fence and it's got the chimney on it. And so with this, I am just going to go with the basic white background for the house. I'm gonna go with a black roof. And I did go with gray fencing. I know that seems kind of backwards. Maybe I should have done the house gray and the fencing white for a white picket fence. But because of the embellishments that I'm using, I wanted to go with the white house. And of course, I am going to add my favorite stitching to this. And there's gonna be stitching all over this house. It's gonna be so stinking cute when it's done. Don't worry, I didn't forget the twine bow on this. I'm gonna finish this birdhouse off with a twine bow, and this here is an example of being a bit heavy-handed with the hot glue. Included in the embellishment pack are these cute yellow flowers, and so I thought that these would be a cute addition to the outside of the house. Just kind of finish it off, give it more detail. Moving right along, I'm on DIY number 12. What do I have in store for you? Using one of these mini mason jars that the Dollar Tree carries. I want to make a cute mason jar candle and so I picked up these white votives and I thought it was going to fit in the mason jar but it's not. So you're going to have to cut these up. Do not throw the wick away because we're going to use it. Not that we're going to burn this candle but you need a wick and a candle right even if you don't burn it. So I'm going to go ahead and place the candle inside the jar. I'm going to place this in my oven to melt it down. And I like to set my oven to about 200 degrees and it'll take about 10 minutes to fully melt down. And these pieces of wax here, I'm gonna set these aside because I'm gonna be using them a bit later. To add color to this wax, I thought it was a good idea to add food coloring. Yeah, what was I thinking? Food coloring does not mix with wax. Why this was a thought, I don't know. But then I thought to myself, okay self, you've used crayons in the past. Why didn't you use it now? So I went ahead, broke apart a yellow crayon, stuck it back in the wax, stuck the wax then back in the oven for a few minutes, melted it down, and here you can see that it colored my wax. I set the wax aside just for a bit till it's semi-solidified. You can tell that it's not completely hardened and that's where we want it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and place those chunks of wax that I set aside in the top, kind of giving it the illusion of maybe some ice cubes in a cup of lemonade. How stinking cute is that? I think this mason jar lemonade would be cute with a sugar rim, so just by adding some glue to the rim of the glass, then taking some sugar or salt, doesn't matter because we're not gonna be eating it, I'm using salt and adding yeah, now I can use the food color to color this. I'm gonna add some of the yellow gel food coloring and just by mixing it around with a popsicle stick, you are going to end up with some yellow sugar. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take my mason jar with the glue on top and just kind of roll it around in the sugar, giving us a sugar rim for our glass of lemonade in this adorable mason jar. And this glass of lemonade definitely needed a straw 
Yeah, for whatever reason, I'm not sure why I opted to paint the straw once it was in the mason jar. Not sure why I did that, but nonetheless, we're gonna have a cute black and white straw in our glass of lemonade with the ice cubes on top and the sugar rim. But this is still missing something. What's it missing? Yep, I am loving this lemon ribbon. It was the perfect finishing touch to this mason jar lemonade. I think the green adds just the touch of color that this needed and I topped it off with this refreshing lemonade embellishment. We're making progress. We're on DIY 13. I am. I'm gonna make a couple of plaques again using these four and a half by four and a half inch wood plaques that the Dollar Tree carries by Crafters Square. I painted one with the yellow, one with the white, and I am going to frame these plaques with the lemon ribbon because I love it. I love it. And I was really trying to think, how else can I incorporate this lemon ribbon because I love it so much. And I figured that this would be a fun way to kind of frame out these plaques. I still had a bit of the yellow gingham paper left over and so I figured that'd be the perfect finishing touch to the back of these plaques. For the plaques this time, Linda and I decided to go the cardstock die cut route versus the vinyl. In the Easter tray, we used vinyl on the plaques, and this time we just thought, you know, let's go the die cut route and make it a bit easier. I'm curious what you all think. Do you like the die cuts better than the vinyl, or would you rather have kind of a mixture of both? I think it still looks really cute adding the die cuts to these plaques, especially when you use the foam tape. It kind of elevates it and gives it that 2D, 3D look. We're almost there, just a couple more to go. We're on DIY number 14. Wah, wah, wah. Yes, it's another repeat DIY. Why am I doing repeat DIYs, especially this tag? Because this tag came in an eight pack. So why would I not add it to the trays? Because it's such a budget friendly addition. We got eight of them for a dollar and it's something that's just gonna add more character to the tray. So I went ahead, I did the base coat white on the front and the back, and to finish off the edges, give it more character, give it more detail. Yep, you guessed it. I'm gonna add some gray stitching. Again, if you don't like the gray stitching, leave it out. But I think it looks way better with it. Come on, just do it. This tag needs a string, it has a hole in it. So I'm gonna use the yellow and white baker's twine because it's perfect for this tiered tray. This color scheme is just so much fun and to embellish it I'm gonna go with this fresh lemonade that was designed specifically for this tag and a couple of the lemons. Just a couple more to go because we're on DIY number 15. These mini frames at the Dollar Tree are adorable and can easily be incorporated into these trays by just simply adding some paint for detailing. I knew that I had some of this black and white gingham fabric in my scrap fabric stash and so I thought, you know what, this black and white gingham would add so much to this tray. And so I went digging through my scraps, I found a few good pieces that were usable and thought that this would be cute to add to the background of this frame. So I'm going to go ahead and hot glue the fabric to the back of the cardboard stand here. And then to the gingham, I'm gonna add this adorable milk jug with this lemon tree in it that Linda designed for this. How stinking cute is that? What a fun little piece to add to these mini frames. Another fun, quick and easy piece to add to your tear tray. Oh my word, two more to go. DIY 16. This is another one of those repeat DIYs where we're using items that we bought for the first tray and we're able to utilize them in this one. So in the first tray, if you did the word spring with the Scrabble tiles, you've got tiles left over. So why not use them in this tray and spell out the word summer? Now this is one of those steps that's totally optional. Like the Easter tray, I felt like this needed more. I felt like I had to paint it. So I went in with the maize yellow and just kind of painted the outside and the back of the tiles yellow. Just kind of hoping it would make the word summer stand out a bit more. Oh my word, we're getting up there. We're on DIY number 17. This one is quick and easy using these mini glass containers by Crafter Square. These are so stinking cute. I somehow wanted to incorporate them into the tray, so I started off by giving the caps a good coating of some white chalk paint. 
I've seen these cute bottles of soap at Dollar Tree for a while. They've got this lemon, they've got an orange, I think they have an apple. And when I initially picked up this lemon hand soap, I picked it up with the intent of somehow incorporating the container itself into the tray. But because it was so big, it just felt awkward. And since I had it, I figured I'd use it and just add the soap to these containers. There is no need to go out and buy this soap unless you want to. If I'm being completely honest, it smells really good and I love using it on my hands. But you could get away with just using some water and food coloring for the inside of these. And well, since I've got some yellow and white baker's twine on hand for this DIY, I figured why not add it to this cap and shush this up a bit. This was kind of a last minute DIY because I really couldn't think of what to do with that soap when I remembered I had these jars and I had a bunch of these leftover cute embellishments left on the pack of the whole lemons and the sliced lemons. And so I thought this would be just something cute to kind of act as a space filler on the tray itself. And I was really happy as I was doing it, how it was turning out, just putting the sliced lemons on the cap to embellishment. And then I went ahead and had whole lemons left over that I added to the front of them. And for the larger, taller glass container, we did design a fresh squeeze lemonade little tag that we thought would be really cute to add to it as well. Now, I think these are fun. Fresh squeezed lemonade. How cute is that? And it's a great way to incorporate the rest of those small embellishments that come in the pack. And for our final DIY for this lemon tray, wait for it. Yep, I'm gonna use this cute little wood truck that I picked up from Michael's. This was in my haul, I wanna say about a month ago. Michael's still has these because every time I go to Michael's, I look in those dollar bins to see if they have any more of these wood trucks. It is an item that they continue to restock and it's only a dollar and how cute are these? And so I wanted 12 of them because I think it's something that I may wanna incorporate into each tray. And so because they're so easy to DIY and create and kind of customize or personalize to each tray, I thought, self, you've got to have 12 of these trucks. And I'm staying true to my nature. I love the red truck, the blue truck, the any colored truck. And so, yeah, you can count on this truck being on every tray. And so for this one, I figured since it was a lemon tiered tray and I had a wheelbarrow, I had a lemonade stand, maybe I need a truck that's carrying lemons from one place to another. Why not? And to finish this truck off, every red truck has writing on the side of it, right? And usually they say farm fresh. So that's what we're gonna finish this one off with. For this tiered tray, I'm gonna be incorporating these LED string lights that have a silk flower type vine on them. I absolutely loved these because I felt like the green was the perfect green to go with lemons and the leaves that you would find on a lemon tree and it would be the perfect pop of color. And so I picked up two packs of these because I thought it would be perfect to add to the stand itself so I can enjoy my stand at night, kind of light it up a bit. Alrighty, so here is the tray done in its entirety. And with this tray, you can see that I went ahead and placed some fabric over the top of the tray, just because I love the look of this black and white gingham. Is it something that can be left out? It totally is. And you can see that I hadn't yet replaced the cardboard, but it is something that has been replaced now. But for now, it worked fine. I am just loving the overall look of this tray and all the fun items that are on it. Now, do I think that you're gonna wanna do all of the DIYs that I put on this tray? Probably not, but I put as many as I do on it to give you options, to give you choices. If you want to make a smaller tray and just do a few of these items, there are several different pieces here for you to choose from, and that really is my goal when creating these tiered trays. Not only do I absolutely love to do them, and I think that they are super fun, but I just love the look of them in general. I think that they are such fun statement pieces and they are versatile pieces and it's an interchangeable piece. And I absolutely gotta tell you, love 
this stand itself. I really felt like I needed a couple of stands just so there were options. And I feel like this yellow, black, and gray stand wouldn't have gone as well with the round white and brown one that I made for Easter. But now that I've got two stands, I can easily choose between the two of them. And I think that just having the two stands, kind of all of my bases are covered. I love the addition of the lights so that way I can enjoy this stand at night as well. I never knew that I loved black, white, yellow, and gray so much. Those color variations just scream summer and lemonade and I love it. Could it be for a bee themed? If you want it to, you totally can do that. But I just feel like it screamed lemon. That ribbon from the Dollar Tree with the lemons on it was everything. I loved it. And I had so much fun doing this tray. There are so many fun little DIYs that you can incorporate into these trays. And just by simply DIYing these trays yourself, you can interchange them for the seasons and you're gonna save yourself a ton of money and you're not gonna have to spend hundreds of dollars on a different tray every time a season or a holiday comes because you're gonna DIY it along with me and you're gonna have these amazing trays and when people come to your house and they see them, they're gonna love them. They're gonna look at all the fun little items on them and just think, wow, you did such a great job on this. Can you make me one? And then you're gonna say no, or maybe you'll say yes because you gotta keep making trays for the rest of the seasons. And when you're doing this tray and every other tray, who has time to make them for everybody else? I know my son wants one. His girlfriend's gonna want one too, I bet you. Okay, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed today's lemon summer themed tear tray DIYs. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes. Because like I always say, and I know I sound like a broken record, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive please. And bye for now everybody.